Hey, Sarah? Yes? Just real quick. How do we mute ourselves on this on this conference call? Uh, on okay, the phone. I see where we are. Star six. Okay. Yep. There you go. All right. Got it. All right. Thanks. Okay. No worries. All right, we're going to get started. So welcome to all of you. Uh, looks like we've got a good mix of alumni and new teachers heading down to Antarctica. So as Janet just said, she'll be right back in a second to um, get us through some of this presentation. But it's nice to see some familiar names out there and connect again. So um, we'll move here through an agenda. Uh, we'll do introductions for everybody about where you're going and, and what projects you're working on. You can give us your little elevator speech. And um, we'll talk about collaborate in a second. We'll go through the goals of all of this webinar and what we're trying to accomplish. And um, some of the pre-field logistics, we do have a little bit of a switch with uh, Lockheed Martin taking over for Raytheon. And any of those requirements that you're still working on getting ready to uh, upload to the website and talk a little bit about your E&O you know, uh, plans. And a little bit from the alumni there too. And then we'll talk with some questions and uh, hopefully get you some answers. So for any of you that haven't used our uh, Blackboard Collaborate platform yet, I'm going to guess that all, uh, almost all of you have used it already. We switched over from Limba. So uh, it's got some of the instructions here. And hopefully your slides just changed to show a screenshot of the um, platform. So our slides will be showing right here in the middle. And hopefully they're switching for you. If you have any trouble with those, with those slides, let me know. And Janet will be doing lots of talking as we move through our slides. But if you do have a question, you can raise your hand. There's a button um, sort of in the participant block there. And it's got a little hand, so you can raise your hand if you'd like to, to ask a question in the middle of the presentation if you need to. You can share a little smiley face if you want, a little emoticons right next to it if you want there. And we might be using a checkbox, which is a polling system, just to see, uh, just to get a quick glimpse of how you're doing out there. And when you go to hold your Polar Connect events, when you're out on your expeditions, keep in mind that you can have people uh, raise their hands or do a little poll with their classroom if you want to ask them a question. Might make the presentation a little more interactive. You can keep an idea of that in your mind as you're planning. You can also see who's available here on the participant list, of course. And you all should have the opportunity to do chat. Um, and so we ask questions there or chat with each other as much as you'd like. All right. Um, and if you are on the phone, like Tim just said, you can press star six to mute the phone and star six to unmute if you need to chat with us. One other thing, too, when you go to press the talk button right below the audio visual panel there. So press talk when you're ready to say something and then press it again when you're done. If you leave it on, we'll just kind of knock you off and bring you back so that, um, so that we stop your audio feed and can, can sort of move on from your question and answer it. So those are some of the features here. And here's a great group picture of our 2012-13 Polar Trek team. Many of these people have already gone out on their expeditions. Even Amber, who went straight off to Antarctica in the course of three weeks, and she's back, and she had a great experience. Um, and then lots of people who are out on the in, up in the Arctic. So let's see. Right now, I think Nick Lefebvre is on his way home. Mark Parisio is somewhere between Siberia and the United States. I think he's probably home by now, but he was uh, working on some flights with his team on the way back this weekend. Christina Solis is up in Barrow right now dealing with snow in July and mosquitoes that she just is blown away by. And other people like Susan, Melissa, they've done some great job uh, working at the Tulip Field Station this summer. Lisa's getting ready to head out, and so is Deanna. I'm sure there's a few more in there that I didn't mention. But how about at this point, we'll go down the list here and do a quick little um, uh, call out to you so you can explain who you are and where you went on your expedition or where you are going. And 
yeah, where you're where you are right now would be great. So, Alex, I think you have joined us by phone, but you're also here online. Do you want to go ahead and start and explain where you are and where you've been? Sure. Um, my name is Alex Eilers, and I am the manager of education at the Pink Palace Museum, and that's in Memphis, Tennessee. And this January and February, I was lucky enough to go to Antarctica to study what else seals in the Ross Sea. Perfect. Thanks, Alex. Sure. Next on the list on the computer is Brian. I'm Brian DeBay. I'm in Detroit, Michigan, and I'm heading to Antarctica in November to do some seismology in the Trans-Antarctic Mountain Range to figure out why that mountain range is there. Perfect. All right, Jackie. Hi, I'm Jackie Hams. Um, am I doing this talk button correctly? Can you hear me? Sure can. Go ahead, Jackie. Well, now we don't hear you. You've got to clock again. Okay. There you go. This is Jackie Ham. I teach at Los Angeles Valley College. It's in, um, well, I guess there's no such thing as a suburb of LA. It's so big. But it's in Valley Gun, California. It's a two-year college. And I will be going in November and December to the dry valleys of Antarctica. We'll be, we're still trying to date the ice. This is my second trip. Um, with the researcher, and this time we're going to be doing, in addition to ice dating, ground penetrating radar, and some other techniques to determine some of the geomorphology. Great, thanks. Go ahead, Leslie. Hi, I'm Leslie Yurowski, and uh, I teach in Rawlins, Wyoming. I went to Antarctica back in 2010 and 11. And Brian, I was in the um, Trans-Antarctic Mountains. You are going to love them. They are so gorgeous. I was along the um, historic Beardmore Glacier. And we were using cosmogenic dating, which is a type of radiometric dating, to help constrain the rate of retreat um, of glaciers since the last glacial maximum. Perfect. All right, Liz, do you have audio working today? I think so. Can you guys hear me? I think it's all right. OK. Um, yeah, I'm Liz Ratliff. And I will be, in four and a half months, I'm going to the South Pole with the Ice Cube project. And we're looking at neutrinos um, through the Ice Cube detector and also through the Aura detector, which is a radio array. Perfect. All right, Mike Leeg. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Leeg. Uh, I teach in Millsboro, Delaware. And in 2011, I spent the fall in McMurdo Station. And we were doing some diving underneath the ice, collecting uh, marine worm to look at genetic adaptations. Uh, and so I'm excited to be here. Perfect. All right, Mike LeBaron. OK. Uh, this is Mike LeBaron. I am theoretically going to be going down in uh, December, first part of December, to hang on. I've got to close off one other speaker there. All right. I'm going to be going down somewhere in the end of November, first of December time frame to McMurdo for a project that is drilling into the uh, Willens subglacial lake environment. And that will be initially a test drill near McMurdo where they're testing equipment. Then there's a, a three week traverse out to the field site, followed by another roughly three weeks of actual on site at a deep, uh, deep field site out there. And the, uh, the <laughs> I can, I'm going to be a little bit vague here because the uh, project has been changing maybe not quite daily, but at least weekly. 
and some of the some of the outreach elements and like which team I'm on and who I'm working for are still a little bit vague in my mind, but that's the general picture of the uh, the project. You're doing a great job hanging in there. <laughs> All right, we have Kim Spuck on the phone. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. I am going to be headed down with the AGO team, which is called the Automatic Geophysical Observatories. And this is a set of instruments that are um, located at various uh, points throughout the throughout Antarctica, and they monitor solar activity, space weather, and have been doing so for uh, many years. And at this point, I believe the plan is I'll be going down in late November um, through the end of December. And I have my meeting with my team coming up here, uh, not this week, but uh, the end of next week. So I will have a lot more information at that point. Great, sounds good. Uh, Kim, you probably you are not online, so people are saying, uh, you know, just sort of chatting with each other, excited about what's happening. And Janet was mentioning that Kim is on the project that Michelle Brown went on for a bit last year. And Mike League says, awesome. It's just not great. Awesome. Yeah. All right, um, so the next thing we're going to go through are the goals of the webinar. Janet, do you want to take over? Or? Um, sure. I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, this webinar is just to help you uh, kind of refocus uh, on where you're going since the last time. Um, most of the people that are heading to Antarctica connected was in um, February. so. This is to help you get thinking about what's coming up on the horizon. And um, we have alumni that we want you to take advantage of, um, uh, you know, ask good questions, get the nitty gritty about going down to Antarctica. It's all for you. And um, also get some ideas about what you might do with school coming up and how you get those students engaged so early in the school year. Some of you are leaving late earlier than others, and others are leaving over the holidays, so you might want to ask questions about that. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's just your chance to ask some questions. Um, I, sorry, I stepped away for a little bit, but uh, one thing was we were supposed to have the um, new contractor online, um, Lockheed Martin, and they were going to, 80 from there was going to join us, but she was unable to. But she's also willing to take any questions that don't get answered today and be um, your advocate for Lockheed Martin. But we'll get to that in a moment. So um, the next slide is just a reminder of the timeline of what's going on and where we are. And um, we are cruising along. We're right there somewhere. In, let me see if I can get my little pointer. We are here, right there, where that sun is, um, and uh, cruising along. And uh, soon, some of you will be heading off into uh, for your expeditions. Um, and I don't know. That's uh, that's just where we are. We have a lot of Arctic expeditions that are just. Um, wrapping up and um, actually a couple more that are going out um, here in August and September and then it will be all about Antarctica. Um, so another slide we have is about who does what again and this is just a reminder since it's, again since it's been a while um, and Tim if I say something since you aren't online just uh, and can't see the visuals just ask me to clarify okay <laughs> and then we, uh, we sent a PDF so you can see that. Okay, I will do that. Okay, sorry, I forget if, you, if about the people that can't see something. Um, so anyway, who does what? Um, well, in um, March we had a changeover of contractors for Antarctica. So the people that get all the NSF um, folks down to Antarctica and back again used to be the contractor Raytheon Polar Services. It switched um, somewhere in Amber Lancaster's uh, cruise. Lucky for her, she got to deal with both Lockheed and uh, Raytheon. Um, but the new government contract is the company Lockheed Martin, and um, we many. Uh, not all, but many of the people that were employed by Raytheon Polar Services to do work in Antarctica got their contracts renewed. 
and are continuing to work for Lockheed Martin. Some, however, some of those people have been switched from one position to another, and our person, our point of contact, our POC, um, for all Polar Trek stuff uh, at Lockheed at uh, Lockheed Martin was Patricia Jackson, but it has now been switched over to Addie Koyak. Um, Addie, I mean, sorry. Addie will be, um, like I said, she's available to uh, um, take questions, and she's actually very familiar with uh, Antarctica. I don't know if any of the alumni have run into her before, but she's also done a lot of work down in Antarctica herself, but she'll be our POC for Polar Trek Service, so that's important to know. Um, again, what do they do? They're going to get you to and from. Um, we'll take a, a little poll here and see where you all are in this process, but um, they're the ones that send out the emails to get you started for the medical um, PQ process. They'll do all the uh, travel to and from Antarctica. They arrange for your lodging, and they'll provide you your any gear, equipment, and training that you need while you're out. Um, while you're out on the ice. So that's their role, and they're paying for all of that. They basically have a chunk of change from NSF to support the Polar Trek teachers, including communications as well. Um, Arcus, we're going to reimburse you for your subs if you need it. Um, and um, But basically, remember, especially as school starts, and we'll talk about this during your pre-field calls, but um, remember that uh, your school will have to send an invoice, just like they did for orientation to Arcus, um, after you come back from your expedition. So let them know about that, especially if you have new administration that's never done this before or something, and they have questions, they can always ask us. But we reimburse them. Um, and then we will reimburse you any medical expenses and things like that that didn't get covered. Um, you do not have to wait to send us invoices for medical expenses and things like that, um, like if you have to pay visa fees or whatever it is, or passport fees or things like that. Just send that to us as you get them. Um, things related to travel will have to reimburse you once your travel is completed to and from Antarctica. Um, researchers. Um, they shouldn't have to pay very much for you at all, if anything. Everything should be covered either through uh, Lockheed Martin or through Arcus. And, but they should be on your SIP, which I think all of you are at this point, so that's not an um, And I have an issue going on in the living room. I don't know if you can hear. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it back over to Sarah. Sorry, the drama of working from home here. Not to worry. We can't hear anything, so it's OK. Good. <laughs> All right, so um, maybe this is a, a good point right here. Maybe what we can do is have you in the chat box give us maybe a little um, sneak peek into where you are in the process of PQ and travel paperwork and that kind of thing. Or you know, just say, yes, I'm good, or I haven't seen anything yet. I think you all are doing pretty well. people typing away, so we'll just hang out for just a second. Okay, and you want me to just give you mine over the phone here? Sure, Tim, sure. go right ahead. Okay, uh, I have already through uh, all of the PQ stuff, so I just need to send my paperwork in. Uh, I'm good to go. Uh, other than my dentist is going to go ahead and he wants to do a, a crown on one of the on one tooth just to be on the safe side. So. But other than that, uh, everything is done. Good, good. And everybody else is sort of furiously typing here. Uh, let's see. Mike looks like he's uh, got his PQ paperwork in progress. Jackie apparently has dilated eyes today. She's been <laughs> working on things. Uh, Brian's got appointments next week, and Liz is filling out paperwork, and the appointments are coming up. Great. Oh, Mike's saying, just remember to make copies of all your stuff. That is a great point. All right, good. So does anybody at this point have any questions about that process or anything that we want to pass on to Addy? Okay. Looks like everybody's 
sitting sitting quiet, so that's good. All right. Um, again, of course, ask any questions you want to us throughout the process, but uh, you should have something that looks remotely similar to this in hand. Do you guys have this yet? You could do a little checkbox, yes or no, or you can type it in. And Kim, this is the participant guide for the U.S. Antarctic Program. Do you have that guide yet? Kim? You might be on mute. Hang on. Anyway. Okay. All right. So the participant's guide? Yes. Do you have that yet? Um, let's see. I'm not sure. Or that I, well, yeah, okay, yeah, because I think Jean, Jean Pennycook, I think, gave that to me. Sort of thing okay, like. good. So well, I want to make sure that you guys are reading that, you know, cover to cover, essentially, um, and making sure that lots of good information is in there, things like emergency contact, how you, you know, you know how people can get a hold of you, how you can, um, you know, get ready to go to Antarctica, what you're going to be doing while you're down there beyond the research project that you're a part of. So um, if you don't have this yet, it looks like, let me scroll back here, uh, it looks like everybody has a copy of it. Leslie is giving some advice here, it says, I put a copy of it on my computer that I took. It came in handy a couple of times. Yeah, and Janet's also mentioning that if we uh, see anything that's changed with Lockheed, we'll kind of let you know or keep you updated. Yeah, lots of good packing tips, and it's a great idea, says Mike and Alex. All right, Janet, you're back. Do you want to jump back in? Holy moly. So sorry. <laughs> okay. You're doing so, good. Don't worry. A few things that I wanted to uh, remind you all. First, we will have a pre-field call with you. I didn't put this on on here, but just remember we are going to have a pre-field call with you and your uh, research team before you go. Uh, for those of you leaving here in early fall, it's actually going to happen here pretty soon, like August, late August and early September. Make sure that you're on track with everything. Um, and I would say for most of you, we'll have wrapped those up by October. Um, so, and some of you, like Michael Barron, you know, depending on your team, we may have more than one just to figure out what's going on and, and the logistics. Or if Brian, your your team's logistics turn out to be super complicated, we'll have might have more than one. But um, right now, I'm thinking everybody's will will at least have just one phone call. Uh, anyway, uh, again, just every, just reminding you who's making your uh, um, travel arrangements. And um, I wanted to take a poll, and I don't know, did you do this, Sarah, to see who's through the PQ process? Uh, I had them type it out a little bit, but they know that there's that checkbox right there. Okay, so there's a, yeah, above the list of participants, and of course this doesn't count for alumni. So. Um, with Brian, Jackie, Liz, and Mike LeBaron, check yes or no if you started your PQ process. And Tim, you can tell me, have you started oh. your Yeah, uh, Janet, they did. They did mention that. We okay. just, they just typed it in the chat box. Oh, okay. All right, well, they're checking away. Um, so if you, if you haven't gotten that um, going, then we need to get you, make sure you're all there. Okay. So at the same time, you're probably also getting some travel worksheets and things like that. I know Mike LeBaron had to get his project number and things like that. So that's another one is if you don't know your project number, let, let us know that you don't know it because um, you're going to need it on a bunch of paperwork. Um, and we'll track that down um, with Addy. Um, as you're getting uh, your travel, uh, at, when you do see your travel paperwork come through, um, and your lot, there's lots of little things which I'm sure the alumni can tell you because Sarah and I actually have never seen the paperwork, so we don't know. We're just going by what everybody else says, but I hear it's a lot. Uh, yeah. uh, we hear it's a lot, and there's a lot of unknowns sometimes. Um, so just be sure to let us know. But you should, if you have time to take personal time after the expedition. Um, we, you're welcome to do so. You, we prefer that you do it after rather than before your expedition, obviously. So, you know, if that's something that you want to do, like spend more time in New Zealand or um, wherever your jumping off point is, uh, let us know. 
Um, substitute costs, we already covered that, medical costs. So um, the number point number five was that um, we can issue a travel advance if you need it. Arcus can. Lockheed Martin cannot give you a travel advance. So if you, you shouldn't have lots of costs, um, but sometimes things come up like excess baggage or you need an extra night of lodging or something like that. Because lodging they will arrange for you, but you will have to pay that on your own and get reimbursed. So I should warning of that, entry and exit fees for any other countries. So if you think you need some cash, let us know. And then um, our last one is that we have some ECW kits for you as you do outreach activities. So um, we, you know, remember that those resources are available to you. Okay. Any questions about that so far? Um, the next uh, the next set of slides, and I don't know what order they're in, so I'll let Sarah run that. But sure. the next thing is, um, we're going to we do have some alumni, and they're going to share their um, tips for success. Of um, or is is that right? That yes. Okay. Um, I hope it's not tips for failure. That would be really bad. That would be bad. <laughs> Although I could probably do a slide about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's um, go ahead. Did you want to say one more thing? No, nope, no, nope, go ahead. Okay. All right. Why don't we start with Leslie? I've got some slides for Mike and then for Alex. But we'll start with Leslie if you want to share a few words there. Well, I think, and I'm sure everybody else is going to say this as well. I think one of the biggest things is just be prepared to be so very flexible. Um, our flights were delayed many, many times because of weather. Um, also, I would say um, take things from home that um, kind of comfort things. I took a pillow because I heard this over and over from other people. And when I was out in the field, the, peel, the pillow that came with mine was probably about an inch thick and maybe 10 inches by 8 inches big. Um, and that just wasn't very satisfactory when you're sleeping on a moraine. Otherwise, I would say pictures from home. Um, read up on the area that you're going to go to and the science that you're going to do before. Um, it really helped me just kind of jump in with the scientists and be a lot more useful um, beforehand. Perfect. Thanks, Leslie. And of course, if uh, if you want to add anything after we go to our other alumni, you're welcome to jump back in too. So we've got some pictures here from uh, Mike League. If you want to jump in, sure. So and Tim, these are just some pictures of um, kind. Yeah. Just um, first of all, very excited for everyone's trip. Uh, I think you're going to have absolutely amazing experiences. Uh, Antarctica is just an absolutely unbelievable place, uh, really beyond description. Um, I thought just a couple of things to share. One is that uh, the researchers, in my experience, are uh, as interested in outreach uh, as you are in their research. And uh, I've got uh, some pictures here on the slide of some things that I would never have imagined that uh, PhD tenured professor researchers would be willing to do to reach out to children. Um, picture of Dr. Adam Marsh and Stacy Kim with little stuffed animals that school groups sent with us. Um, and these really help uh, things come alive for students who are following your expedition. I also think that uh, some of the best ideas of the outreach that we did uh, during my time there came from the researchers themselves. Uh, they really got enthused and excited about it. So don't forget to uh, tap into them and, and grab some of their enthusiasm. Uh, I think on the second slide, Sarah, um, one thing that was really important to my experience was building really strong relationships both before and then during travel uh, with the team. Uh, I think the stronger the relationships you build, uh, the more willing that they're going to be to step up and really uh, help you on those really strange requests like can you get up with me at 2 in the morning to do a you know Polar Connect event or hey I need a picture of you doing crazy things out in the snow and on the ice. Um, and then I think as a byproduct of that you'll be surprised how much you're willing to do for them whether it be scooping ice or 
uh, sorting through, you know, fecal material or whatever it might be to help the research project in any way, shape, or form. Uh, on the third one, uh, I thought uh, something that was really interesting to me was how much of the larger McMurdo family uh, was interested in outreach. Um, I don't know if this will be true with Lockheed Martin, uh, but uh, with Raytheon, a lot of times Raytheon employees could not do outreach, um, and yet they have all these family connections uh, back home. So think about including them uh, in your journals and maybe on Polar Connect events. Uh, they are an amazing group of people, uh, and they uh, and they're definitely willing to and excited about outreach. And then finally, on the last slide, uh, just thought I'd remind everyone that. Uh, it's an amazing place, and you're going to see some of the coolest stuff that you've ever seen. Uh, so you know, try to capture it and take it in, and don't forget to uh, stop and smell the roses, as they say. Perfect. All right, and I'll uh, anybody have any questions for these two so far? Uh, Tim Leslie also just wrote. Bring reading material. We were stuck in the field for an extra week, and we all ran out of books, even passing them around. Time passes very slowly when you're stuck in a weather situation. Uh, Janet says, bring e-pubs. Um, and Leslie says, it'll change your life forever. Prepare to fall in love. Um, <laughs> so that's what's coming through right now, just so Tim knows. And all right. Well, thanks for those comments. Of course. And we'll pass it over to uh, Alex. All right. Um, did you guys ever hear the words uh, at orientation, practice, practice, practice? I feel sure <laughs> you did. It was drilled into us. Um, and being that we went in Antarctica, we had um, some time to practice. So one of the best things I did was really to take advantage of that and find out you know, everybody's you know expeditions a little bit different, um, but researching what past alumni did was extremely helpful. Um, talking to the PI and trying to find a story that we want to tell was extremely helpful. And I did a lot of pre-work, so it made it a little bit easier um, down there. And one of the things I did a lot of, well, the words aren't on the slide, um, a lot of participatory activities. We were tagging seals, and we were going to do this 21 times. So I didn't want all of my journals to, to be, oh, we're doing a tagging procedure on seal 19. Um, so we decided as a team to take a closer look at the animal. And so each day, we would take a closer look at, well, the ones in the picture are the seal family. And I don't really, I can't remember what the other one was. It must have been about penguins and seal pups. Um, but we sent these out to area teachers. They chose from um, kind of a predetermined list of things that we knew we were going to talk about down there. And then we told them that in each one of the journals, we would highlight their, what they want to take a closer look at during the blogs. And so each one of my blogs, each one of my closer look blogs highlighted um, the school or the class that participated in that. Um, since I was, at, well, actually Mike is the last one in our cohort to go. He still hasn't gone. But I was one of the uh, last ones. And so I really wanted to do a lot of participatory stuff. And so we did what's wrong with these pictures. Um, I, I know, uh, Mike League, I read some of your journals, and you were answering the same questions I have, or I did. You know, are you going to see polar bears down there? And no, of course, you're not going to see polar bears. So we did a polar bear and penguins in the same picture and just asked them what was wrong with it. We did um, zoomed in on some pictures. Uh, we got some penguin um, artifacts and some seal artifacts before, and so we took zoomed in pictures and asked them what to do. Um, one of the most fun things we did was we partnered with TCVY, and we had them, um, we had students create a Polar Sunday, and we um, selected the winner. And, uh, 
one of the winners is there in the picture. And they were just really, really creative. They had to put a reason why they chose the toppings. For instance, you know, you go into TCBY, you see all these toppings. And this little girl put, um, oh, she put Oreos on there to represent the black and white of the penguin. She put hot fudge on there to keep me warm. And of course, she used vanilla ice cream to represent the glaciers and stuff. So that was actually uh, really a lot of fun. Um, one of the busiest things, uh, one of the busiest days on Ask the Team was when um, the students received their postcards um, from Antarctica. We did a huge push with that, and I think we ended up sending back 2,400 postcards, which was completely amazing. Um, but if you look on the lower right hand, or, I'm sorry, lower left hand, I actually stuck the expedition, uh, like the follow the expedition ad, and put my link. And I would strongly suggest you guys do that because there were several people who just sent them to family and friends, and they really didn't know anything about it. And I, I mean, I literally got 30 questions the day most people uh, received their postcards. So that was, I would strongly recommend that. And um, I imagine your team is going to have um, several graduate students, and they were amazing, absolutely amazing. And so the picture of the bee with the flower, we ended up, um, a challenge was uh, <laughs> to say that we had a lot of type A personalities, and so they really enjoyed the challenge. And so we put um, photo challenges up once a week. And so that was a real fun activity for all involved, graduate students as well as um, the participants or the people who followed. All right, if you go to the next slide, um, people would ask, they are so interested about, are you having fun, what are you doing personally, and what are you eating? Um, so be sure to answer um, all those questions in your uh, journals. And then the last one, uh, last slide is, I was um, pack light. <laughs> you, you can get stuff down there. Um, I made the mistake of uh, packing quite a bit, and you just, you don't need it. Um, if you're at McMurdo, you've got um, places to wash your clothes. Um, like I said, graduate students are amazing. They can help in um, any any way, and they're very willing to do that. And I also would recommend bringing little thank you gifts. We're from Memphis, or I'm from Memphis, and um, a barbecue is is big in Memphis. So I brought um, everybody a little bit of Corky's barbecue sauce. I went to graduate school there, and or I went to work there during graduate school and um, sent some of those. And they, um, giving those to the computer people and anyone that you might need help uh, from <laughs> during your stay um, is amazing. Uh, and one last thing, or a couple last things, bring a good personal camera. That is one thing I wish I would have had um, time, wish I would have taken some classes on, on outdoor photography. Um, and be afraid of Frosty Boy. <laughs> That's the last thing. Mm. Be afraid of Frosty Boy and the bakery. Those, those are the things you put on a few pounds um, at McMurdo Station. <laughs> the bakery was absolutely amazing um, at McMurdo. And I never thought I would eat so much ice cream um, <laughs> in Antarctica. It's a wonderful ice cream machine. Oh, and I thanks. think that's uh, that's all I have right now. Perfect. Um, yeah, there's been lots of uh, lots of text going by as as I have to any of those. Yeah, no, it's okay. I'll read them out a little bit for Tim. Uh, Leslie, I don't know if you want to comment a little bit more on what you said. Be prepared for technical difficulties. I wasn't able to receive any email, so I couldn't answer. Oops, I'm typing. I couldn't answer ask a team question until I, until I returned after five weeks. Leslie, do you want to um, get on the microphone and talk a little bit more about how you handled that? Sure, I can do that. Um, it, 
it probably took us two days with the tech guys in McMurdo to get my computer to finally be able to do some semblance of email. And I had everything going. Things could come in. Things could go out. Um, and then once I got out into the field, I have no idea. Nobody knows what happened. But um, I was doing all of my internet, my blogs, my computers, everything through a satellite phone. And I couldn't receive any emails. So the only way I knew if something was happening is if I occasionally got on the satellite phone. Um, Janet and um, all the tech people at Polar Trek were amazing to try and accommodate that. When I did get back from the field, um, I had five weeks worth of Ask the Team um, questions to go through. So just be really flexible. It is, um, can be very, very frustrating. I had a hard time uploading pictures. There were times um, when it took me four or five phone calls to get everything to transmit through the, the satellite modem. So um, again, flexibility, it can be so frustrating. But Polar Trek is great for helping. They get messages out to all the people following your blog. And I think everybody understands pretty well that um, there can be issues. You're still in a, a very remote place. And it's kind of a great learning experience for the students and for the general public because they have a vision of Antarctica being very connected. Um, and it's come a long way in what it, from what it used to be. Um, but it gives them a good idea that there's still some um, remoteness to the whole experience. Yeah, good points, lessons, Janet. Um, we, ja I know Jackie uh, had some experience with this um, when she went last time as well, and and even places like South Pole Station, which do have good connectivity, which Liz and uh, Tim will be out for at least a little bit of your time. Tim will go out to a field and have the satellite phone stuff going on, but um, you know, even South Pole this has its quirks too, and and you are are relying on the satellites passing overhead um, uh, at certain times of the day um, to coincide with what you are trying to uh, do. So just uh, you know, come up with several backup plans. And and I think Alex, when Alex says practice, 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 it's more than practicing just um, journaling. It's being prepared, um, having up many backup plans, have some journals and things uh, or responses or someone to post for you um, or you know CDs and a memory stick filled with stuff that can go on the next helicopter flight back to McMurdo ready to go. So it's just kind of a combination of practicing, being flexible, and kind of thinking ahead. And um, it's hard to do that when you haven't been to a place like that. But as much as you can, just kind of um, Kind of think ahead about what some anticipate some of the things that might come up. Um, yeah, because it, 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 there's nothing that will get be more frustrating is when the technology starts stops working and you can't do what you want to do, and that usually is the hang up. Most everything else seems to go okay. It's the technology piece. If you aren't feeling very comfortable or don't know what would have happened if you had done it right, then when it goes wrong, it's really hard for us to troubleshoot and to figure out what is going wrong on on your end. So. Be prepared. Know what's go what what things look like. Have a backup plan. If Polar Trek email is not working for you, do you have a uh, um, Gmail account or some other web accessible uh, email thing that works for you, or that somebody can read? Um, is there a phone number you can call? That kind of thing. All right. Um, and that reminded me. I, I forgot yeah. to mention for those of you that will need satellite phones or some satellite phone practice. Um, well, I'll talk to um, Addie a little bit about it, but um, sometimes in the fall before you go, we're able to get um, satellite phones um, to you from um, our Arctic contractor, SRI and CPS, so that you can practice the protocols before you go down to Antarctica. Um, sometimes the models are the same, sometimes they aren't. 
but we can at least um, see if we can get you some phones to practice this with. Uh, Lockheed Martin might allow, Raytheon never had phones for us to use, borrow beforehand, but Lockheed might have them. So we'll inquire about SAP phones at least um, with Addy so that those of you that need to try it out, like um, particularly Tim, you might need to try it out, Brian um, for a little bit, and Jackie again because things might have changed since the last time you were there. Perfect. Hey, Jenna, I want to jump back up here with all this text. There's lots of good suggestions coming through. Uh, way back up here, Janet was saying, just for Tim's sake, um, that uh, Alex gets the award for largest number of participants on any Polar Connect event. There were like three or four thousand people registered, and it like was unbelievable what she um, how she did that. And and yeah, we do know a little bit about how she did that. I we said, you know. Write us an explanation of of how you did that. It was amazing, and so we have a document from her, and we will certainly include it in the next notebook for next year's uh, people. But I'll see what I can do to get it out to everybody. Uh, let's see what else. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, go I ahead. One one thing I forgot to. Um, one of the I think the best things I did was anytime someone asked me a question, um, I had I made. Um, just on a, a Word document, a little handout. It was in the shape of a, it was a little square box, and then it had the shape of a kind of seal in it, and then I had my web information right there. So if anyone asked about it, I just handed them uh, the little card, and it was a, a, a neat little takeaway. So I would strongly suggest um, just giving something. Always have them in your purse or, you know, in your wallet or something, and just give them away. Business card. Good. Well, it was kind of like a business card, although I'm pretty cheap, so I just did it on, on uh, you know, sheets of paper. Uh, oh yeah, no, that's perfect. Yeah, just something simple and easy. Good. Leslie is saying, uh, if you're out over Christmas, bring presents for your team. Even a candy bar is a good thing. Leslie says, uh, polarizing filter on your camera. That'll be good. Um, journal entries about team members are always really good as well. Mike says, bring a USB stick to share your photos with researchers and back and forth. I know his team shared lots of photos with him. Alex is mentioning that Gmail works pretty well down there at McMurdo. Uh, if you do have a sat phone, offer the use of it to your team members, Leslie is saying. And then many of them are used to, be, used to being out of reach, um, but they're excited to be able to connect with families. They can also do that through our um, Polar Connect events, which we hope you will be doing while you're out there, everybody. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, good suggestions. I just wanted to catch everybody else up on that. And Janet, I'll turn it over to you for the education and outreach stuff. Okay, sounds good. So this is just a reminder that you do have um, some requirements that come to us as part of your education and outreach planning efforts. And um, Tim will talk to you about Basically, your your education outreach plan since you went to uh, the Arctic will be basically a combination of, of both activities, and we can talk about what's realistic for lessons and things like that. But anyway, uh, education outreach plan ha is made up of several components. You have things that are due before you go out. So this is a needs assessment um, in particular that needs to happen here um, in the next couple of months for some of you that are leaving in the fall usually about a month before you, or any time between now and, and uh, when you, before you go. Um, we also need drafts of things. Oh, how, do you, how are you working with your, teacher, your researchers? Start, uh, you should have started that at orientation, but um, we have a teacher researcher networking plan. Are you getting the information about the research that you need? Um, can we help you in, in that capacity? Do you have um, enough documentation about how you're going to work with them while you're in the field. We want you to have those discussions. Um, um, it's good to do that now. You know, you don't have to wait for the pre-field call. Remind them that you're preparing for Antarctica, that school's coming up, and that you want to uh, be able to be in contact with them. Um, also, with the, there's the classroom implementation strategy. How are you, what are your thoughts? These are just really your draft outline ideas about how you're going to bring this into this class, and for those of you going to Antarctica, 
in the, during the school year, um, obviously this is going to be more fleshed out than it would have been for the Arctic because you'll probably have to have um, have this already up and going for, before you uh, when you leave school for your subs and stuff. So, you know, what it, what's your class going to be doing while you're in the field? What's your plans um, for when you come back? And then. Um, the outreach strategies, both professional and public, again, the drafts are due before you go out into the field and upload it on the website. Um, what are your thoughts? What do you want to do while you're out in the field? And what do you do, want to do when you come back um, for public and, and peers? So just put those ideas down on paper and then uh, and upload them. The things that are due when you come back are the lesson plans and the reflection essay. Um, as well as posting a journal that you've made it back. But um, we'll remind you of those when you come back. Um, but please go to the Education Outreach Plan and uh, check it out. Uh, the reason why we're doing all this is it's documentation. It helps synthesize your ideas and experience. And, and, um, and it provides data for our evaluations. And um, the documents also are a good way of sharing with uh, your your administration as well as your researchers what your ideas are. And uh, the research team does like to see this stuff because um, they want to know. We get a lot of questions even years down the road. Well, I don't really know what my teacher did with this experience. And so this helps. So if you have that um, written out, at least fleshed out, we can say, well, this is what their initial plan was. You know, Let's follow up with them and see what they're doing since then. So, um, Please fulfill those out, uh, requirements. And uh, remember, everything can be uploaded. And if you have questions about how to do it, let us know. Um, we have uh, just a few things about putting your education outreach plan to work for you. Um, mostly, uh, this is for the outreach piece. And we talked about this already. A lot of ideas have gone by. But putting your education outreach plan to work for you um, is really you know, you can share it with news and TV, radio, media contacts. <laughs> you can do live events. I should, a thing about live events when you guys start getting back to school again. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you should um, start thinking about those live events and how many are realistic while you're at school. And if you're going over the holidays, any holidays, you know, when are you going to be in the field and when is your school not going to be in session? Are there any conflicts there? Um, as you get your calendars, just kind of start nailing down some possible dates and stuff. It gets pretty crazy um, during the holiday season between November and late November, Thanksgiving, and January 1st with Sarah and Arcus and everything. Um, just because there's a lot of meetings going on and with all the holidays, um, it's just really hard to find days that will work. Um, for uh, Polar Connect events. So start thinking about all those things and when they would work for you in your school. And just a heads up for personally, I'm going to be gone from December 10th to January 15th. So um, I'm sure Sarah would like a heads up on any of this stuff before it happens <laughs> as much as possible. Um, Anyway, also remember that there's an adult audience. Not only should you be tailoring things towards students, but you've got families of the research team. Make sure that they know the links to your expedition page um, so that they can share it with their colleagues and families. And then um, uh, so they could, families like to follow along. There's been some great posts by kids and parents and, and relatives, as well as peers. You know, the research team have a lot of professionals that are following them, and, and they um, also can post your expedition page cross-posted on their university or faculty website. So make sure you do that. Um, keep a list of followers um, so that you can contact them while they're out in the field. Uh, while you're out in the field, you can say, hey, i got a live event coming up, you know, or I just posted a really neat journal I thought you might be interested. So um, keep a list of your followers. And um, also just uh, keep a list of who you're presenting and your connections with the communities and groups that are doing that. I don't know. Anything you want to add to that, Sarah? Nope. You're good. <laughs> um, for uh, 
let's see, so kind of going back on some of those comments, I wasn't watching what had happened while I was talking, but um, maybe let's see. For Tim's benefit, um, oh, Mike Link said that researchers love to come to the schools. NSF requires broader impact statements, and this helps them complete them. Don't forget to document those efforts and share your, with your research. They can use that documentation. Documentation that is so true. Um, if you send us web links to news stories or um, things that you've done, we will try to link them also on your website um, with you. But the researchers really want to know what you've been doing as well, um, and uh, see any listings from newspapers or any stories from newspapers and stuff like that. Um, Leslie says, ask to accompany your researchers to a conference. It encourages researchers to participate. Yes, um, that's a good point for alumni and something for uh, the teachers going out this year to consider. The American Geophysical Union Conference is coming up. Um, in December of this year in San Francisco, but the abstract submission is for is August 8th. So for alumni, um, if you haven't thought about um, about submitting an abstract to AGU, we encourage you to do so. That's a good one to um, talk to your researchers about to see if they're attending and um, if you can co-present a poster or a presentation at AGU. They actually have an education. Um, section called uh, teachers and research teacher researchers ex teacher research experiences you know tailored towards teachers that have done these things but they also have a lot of um, other education and outreach um, um, sections to the AGU meeting that you could present so that might be a good one to do um, and one certainly we encourage you to um, to apply to in the future. Um, let's see, Leslie also said, I sent out announcement postcards to everyone on my Christmas list and was surprised at the different groups that began following my expedition. Well, lots of good ideas there. All right, we're coming up on our hour here, so let's see, what else do we have? A uh, cute picture of you and me. Ah, uh, yes, it is a cute picture. I like that picture. Uh, just remember that we do have things for you to borrow. We already talked about the ECW kit. Um, that we will be setting up those pre-field logistics calls here pretty soon. Um, we can help you with a press release. Um, we've got publications. You got the website. You got newsroom. Like I said, any of the articles get uploaded and linked to your uh, website. So if you start getting media inquiries. You can direct them to the website. There's a whole section about how they can get photos and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we do have travel support, and this applies to the alumni as well as um, the people going out. We do have travel support for you to get with your team either before um, or after the expedition. So I heard Tim. Tim's going to meet with his team here coming up. Um, but if anybody else needs help doing that, just let us know. And I think that's it. Any questions? <laughs> this is for uh, Tim Spuck, uh, since you're on the phone, Tim. Mike League says, tip, thanks, Sarah, Janet, Ronnie, and Zeb, every chance you get. <laughs> we're so bad. Yeah, we do take donations of chocolate and cool gadgets from Antarctica or your trap. <laughs> Perfect. Anything? Brian, it looks like you don't have a question. Anybody else have any questions? Um, one thing I was trying to remember to have you guys do, uh, Brian, Liz, Tim, Jackie, if you have an update, if your research team is working with you and sends you an email that updates you on your expedition, specifically dates or something like that, that will be very helpful to pass on to Janet and I. Sometimes it seems that teams will begin to talk to each other and pass lots of information, and then Janet and I are sort of like, what? What's happening? So just clue us in if there's a piece of information you think we need to know. Please do. Um, but dates would be helpful. Right now, some of you are still kind of going somewhere between November and December or January or something. So I'll update the website as soon as I can. And Tim, uh, we're working on getting you your AGO page up there. Okay. Yeah. Um, it looks like Mike wants to talk. Go ahead. I was just going to share um, a 
pearl of wisdom from the past, uh, Juan Botea uh, shared during our training to consider your significant others or people that you leave behind. This is a really difficult experience perhaps for them as you leave. Uh, so Juan suggested that you know he scheduled stuff for his wife, um, flowers, chocolates, that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm, I don't happen to be that particular person, but I took his advice and did some of that and um, really helped my wife and kind of survive the, uh, the ordeal of being separated. So keep in mind those folks that you leave behind um, and try to find ways to uh, you know connect with them while you're out in the field. Point. Yeah, I want to just reiterate that the, the phones, um, the set phones like Leslie mentioned, even if you're out in remote sites, um, you know, feel free to, to Skype if you can or make those phone calls, you know, once a week or at a set time or whatever with families or people that um, back home um, that need that extra connection. So. You're free to do so. It's allowed. It, don't worry about the cost. We talk about this in pre-field as well to make sure that uh, you know the contractors and the research team know that um, usually it's just the contractors since they're the ones that pay for the phone calls. But NSF, just so you all know, NSF allows for these things. I think Mike and Mike League and Alex um, um, tested the waters for us down in. Right. Uh, Murdo was Skyping and everything like that um, with classrooms and stuff where they didn't used to allow it. Mike went down in August and we started the Skype bandwagon down there in uh, McMurdo connecting with classrooms and everybody else. And you know, by the time uh, we got to the spring of this year, um, it was okay for uh, Polar Trek teachers to use that tool. So you know, um, make sure you connect with everybody. It's it's fine. Um, communication is important all the way around. Sounds good. Oh, and one more thing about communication while you're down there. And also before you go, if there's things that are going on like you haven't heard from your team for a while, for whatever reason, like, you know, it's been a long time since February or the when you might have last talked to them. So if you haven't heard from your research team, you're like, I wonder, and you don't want to wait for the pre field call because you got a question, just let us know. Um, if you're getting emails that aren't being responded, no responses, I guess, to emails, let us know about that too. And we, you know, we'll see if, if it's just your researchers super busy and out on vacation or things like that, or maybe they're in the field doing some other work. Um, you know, we'll help to um, mitigate that. And um, I, I want to reiterate this for all of you. I we would rather hear about something once you're in the field. If something's going awry, like your teach, your communications aren't working, something's happened, you don't like it, you're not feeling safe, um, you got family issues, whatever it is. We want to hear about it, even if you're in the deep field, um, even if you think it's a minor issue, give us a call. Let us know um, before um, it turns into a big deal and or it's two months after the field season. We want to hear about all of these things along the way. We'd rather hear about them sooner rather than later. Definitely. We can handle it and deal with it. So I think that's it on our end, unless there's anybody that has uh, specific questions or alumni with parting thoughts. People typing. Tim, do you have anything that you want to say since you've been on the phone? Everybody else has the opportunity to text away here. <laughs> uh, nope. I think I'm uh, pretty good. I'll see if I have questions after my meeting with Bob and those guys in a couple weeks. And um, but other than that, everything is seems to be running smoothly. All right here, I'll just go down the list real quick and make sure that we're good with everybody. Uh, Brian, you all set? All right, Jackie, how about you? <laughs> They're saying yes. Um, okay, uh, Liz, anything from you? Uh, nope, I feel pretty good. Okay, and Michael Barron. Uh, 
typing away. Okay, so uh, Mike does have some updates for us, so we'll connect with him offline. All right, well, thank you, alumni, for joining us. Great advice. I hopefully this was useful to all of you. And uh, Mike Lee is sticking around a little bit if anybody has questions. But we also have um, you have their email addresses, and um, when we do our pre-field calls, you'll have a match teacher with you as well, so you'll get to hopefully ask them some questions, a partner teacher. And uh, with that, I think we're done. Um, Sounds yeah. good. Yeah, I'm excited for the Antarctic field season, that's for sure. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. All right, it was good talking to you all. Um, and uh, we'll talk to you again sometime. Yeah, we'll have an archive up for this presentation in a bit. Bye. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Take care.